Good morning. It's Friday, June 23rd, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Searching for Joy, and our scripture is Philippians chapter 1. Paul writes, Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my request for all of you with joy, for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. The classic poem, Casey at the Bat, tells the story of Mudville, a little town at the turn of the 20th century where baseball is everything. The Mudville team is losing by two runs with two outs and everyone is dejected. People start leaving the stands. There's little hope because two of the worst players are scheduled to bat next. Certainly one of them will make the last out and the game will be over. But against all odds, both get a hit, and they're safely on base. They represent runs that will tie the score. And now it's the turn at bat for the local baseball hero and legend, the mighty Casey. With every confidence in their man, the people anxiously await Casey's heroics. But he lets the first two pitches go by without so much as a wave of his bat. Two strikes. The next pitch will tell all. An out would be unthinkable with Casey. Certainly, it will be a home run and a win for Mudville. The scene is set. Two outs. Two on. Two runs behind. One pitch will create happiness, joy, unrestrained. Or... They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain. They knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball. And now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere. And somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing. And somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. If you ask a hundred people what it means to have joy, you might get about two billion different viewpoints. Everything from Rocky Road ice cream to balancing the checkbook or their dog's latest cute trick. Most will give you some variation of the dictionary definition, the emotion evoked by well-being. That's not far from what Paul said to the Philippian church when he wrote to say that he's praying for them with joy. The ancient Greek word he uses is kara, calm delight. Calmly delighted in the inner man, content, having a sense of well-being. No matter what storms may blow around me, I am at peace inside. That is so different from what we see in much of contemporary culture where circumstances, your health, friends, position, toys, affluence, seem to dictate whether you can experience joy or ever be happy at all. For you today, well, can you? Can you really experience joy? We can all probably agree on the definition of joy. The main question is, what produces it? And how can we have joy in our everyday life? Stay tuned. Apostle Paul is going to unfold the answers. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.